How's it going guys? I'm Theo Joe, and if you didn't hear about it, not too long ago, there was a major Bluetooth exploit discovered that had a bunch of different vulnerabilities that basically made it so pretty much every single Bluetooth device on the planet was vulnerable to a hacker who could take full control of any of those devices. This would include any Android phones, any iPhones, Windows devices, Linux devices, but apparently Mac was one exception, but still, there was over 5.5 billion devices affected by this exploit. So we're gonna talk a little bit about it, make sure that at this point you're all patched up because they did release patches for it, and we could talk about how it worked and why it was a really big deal. First of all, these exploits were collectively called Blueborn, so it's kind of like a combination of Airborne and Bluetooth, and they were discovered by a security company called Armist. And they did this, they figured it out probably about a year ago. And then back in July, they started telling tech companies so they could get in, in and silently patch them before everyone really knew about it and could be exploited. And the reason I'm bringing it up right now is because there is a little bit of renewed interest around it because it's now discovered that not just were computers exploitable, but also like smart home devices like your Amazon Echo, your Google Home, all of these devices were also exploitable. So it was potential that some hacker could have gotten in your device if they hadn't patched it. Luckily, these devices were patched by Amazon and Google, but it really does renew the urge to keep your devices up to date and always be a little bit skeptical about technologies that aren't necessarily secure. So you shouldn't really use Bluetooth and keep it on if you're not using it rather, because Bluetooth is kind of notoriously janky, I guess you could say. It's not an amazing technology, it's pretty old. It can really only handle one to two megabits of data, even though it's used in so much stuff, it's really not that great for how ubiquitous it is. But anyway, we can go back to this exploit. So it turns out there are eight different exploits that were discovered in this set, and four of them were considered critical, and the four other ones were, I guess, minor. And these were zero day exploits, so supposedly they had never been released before. And they were for every single version of Bluetooth, not just old ones, but new ones as well. And the really scary part about this exploit was that it required no user interaction at all. It didn't require the user to click a link, didn't require them to download anything. All they had to do is have Bluetooth on. And because of the way Bluetooth works, it's basically always searching for connected devices, even if it's not paired with them. So a hacker could use these exploits to basically tell the Bluetooth device to connect to it and then execute this exploit, even if it wasn't paired with it and take complete control over that device. And this attack would be completely invisible and undetectable to the user. They wouldn't even know what happened, but then their device could then be a carrier for that attack, which could then spread to every other Bluetooth device they walk by. If they're outside going shopping, I mean, think about how many people's phones you're gonna walk by, how many Bluetooth devices like speakers, radios, even if you're walking by someone's apartment and they have an Amazon Echo or something, it would exploit that because this doesn't take long. Pretty scary stuff if that thing had not been patched before it really got out of hand. So we should talk about how you can know if your device is patched up. First of all, if you're on Android, they released a patch that fixed this on September 9th, 2017. So if you didn't get the security patch on that date, then you could be vulnerable and it's probably best to not turn on Bluetooth if you're not using it immediately. But I mean, really that goes for any time because Bluetooth does use up energy. So if you're not using it, it's best practice to turn it off anyway, but this is just another double reason. And who knows, there's probably gonna be more exploits discovered in the future that we will never know about. As for Windows, every Windows version since Vista was vulnerable, but they did release a patch on July 11th, 2017. So if you're keeping your Windows machines up to date, then you're fine. I mean, unless you really don't ever update it, which you're probably, you probably have a plethora of viruses anyway, then you should be fine. But I've said it time and time again, guys, keep your Windows systems up to date. And if you aren't using Windows 10, you know, you may as well just upgrade. You're gonna have to eventually. And whether you like it or not, Windows 10 
is actually the most secure version of Windows. Like I said in another video, they released some exploit protection features into the latest version of Windows with the fall creators update that was only available in a special uh, piece of software that you really wouldn't know about unless you downloaded it specifically, but now those advanced protection features are now built into Windows. If you're using a Linux device, you're probably fine as long as it's a relatively updated distro. They did release an update for it that should have got pushed out to all the distros. So if you're using Linux, hopefully you're tech savvy enough to keep it up to date. As for iOS, like iPhone, iPad, you should be fine as long as again you keep it up to date relatively because actually this exploit was fixed back in version 10. So if you're using 9 or earlier, you are vulnerable to this, but if you're using iOS 10 or later, which is even the last version, then you will be fine. And as for Mac devices, like Mac OS, I didn't read anything about that on the website where Armas talked about which devices were exploited, so I'm assuming that was never vulnerable in the first place. Now, one company you do need to be aware of is Samsung, because Samsung was actually contacted by Armas, this company, along with all the other companies, and they all responded, except for Samsung, apparently. So they tried to tell them about this exploit, and supposedly Samsung did not respond as of the time that I read this. So if you have a Samsung device that's not Android, then like, I don't know, a smart TV or something, you might wanna be careful and turn off Bluetooth on that because it seems like Samsung didn't really care about this exploit or if they did patch it, they didn't really tell anyone. So I don't know what's up with that. You might be able to do your own research after this video is released if you're watching it later to see what happened, but as of now, that's all I know. And then finally for the devices, like I said, Amazon Echo and Google Home were patched and that's pretty easy. You don't really have a choice in keeping those devices up to date. So that would have done been done for you. But the thing is that there are probably plenty of other devices that you have not patched. I mean, there's probably devices in your home that you had no idea had Bluetooth, like Bluetooth speakers. I mean, yeah, wouldn't really matter if someone hacked into your Bluetooth speaker. What are they gonna do, play annoying music or something? But if you have old phones that you haven't used, or like I said, your TV or something has Bluetooth on it, there's plenty of devices that do use Bluetooth that you might not even know about that are still vulnerable, even though they might not be desirable to be hacked. But still, if someone's walking by with an infected device, it's just gonna infect everything whether a hacker would be interested in it or not. And a couple ways this exploit could be used by a hacker is not just for full control to hack your device and take pictures or whatever, but maybe as a man in the middle attack where it just kind of listens for stuff you do and just observes and sends all that information back and you would never know about it. It would just be completely invisible, completely silent. So there's a lot of danger in this and it's just more and more reason to keep your devices up to date I don't know how many times I'm gonna have to say it, but the way things keep going, I'm probably never gonna be able to stop saying it, so just do it. So yeah, there's probably not much more to say about it. I just wanted to let you guys know that this did exist if you hadn't heard of it. I don't think it was as popular and talked about as like the crack attack for Wi-Fi that I made a video about a little while ago. So if you haven't been updating your stuff, just do it, and of course, it, there's more and more reasons to do it every day with more and more hacks. I'm sure that one day we're gonna figure out that, I don't know, some device we use that is completely ubiquitous has some incredible vulnerability that we're all vulnerable to again. Gonna have to make another video, we'll see. So yeah, if you guys did enjoy this video, let me know what you think down in the comments. If you wanna keep watching, you can watch some other videos right here, just click on those. And if you wanna subscribe, I make new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, should be worth it. And also be sure to enable notifications by clicking the bell next to the subscribe button or else YouTube, the algorithm is probably not gonna show you my new videos even if you do subscribe, so keep that in mind. So again, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. So thanks so much for watching, I'll see you next time. Have a good one.